we'll talk about this yeah uh, this new pad uh, at uh, in the south uh, how how does it look like we we haven't seen new like will it be just like uh, Uh, again, a vertical assembly tower, vertical assembly VAB, and uh, yeah, it has to uh, be vertical because it is a solid motor-based system. You cannot tilt it that easily. Mm-hmm. Of course, it can be tilted. It's not very heavy, hundred ton plus mm-hmm. only. But still, we are making it vertical. So it is a vertical plant uh, with a vertical integration facility away. We'll move on rail to that place and launch. Okay, so it's like a, a small, like a minimal small PSL launch pad. Yeah. Considering the blast radius. I, this is known, but still, considering the blast radius, we can't launch a PSLV. Of course, PSLV cannot be launched. It's only two kilometers to the border. Right. Yeah. So we can't. Yeah. So this will be like SSLV and other startup. SSLV and all small rockets can be done. Okay. So it's still how many years away from? Uh, roughly. Just started. So land acquisition is just over. Land, uh, you know, verification orders con- contracts are just being awarded. So two years. Yeah, the new satellite image is roughly. We, I think we are starting to see the like the ground being cleared, and like you will see start seeing the infra boundaries, etc. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there will be only one pad, or these like new startups and all can put their own. They can pad. also put pads depending upon the safety, the type of rocket, etc. Okay. We already put a sounding rocket pad there. So. Ah. One thing about SSLV was there was a gap between D2 and D3. Right on D2, you had multiple fail safes. That is, uh, vibration dampening. Uh, you bought in Navik as a backup to the IMU failing, and uh, also like a recheck for FDI logic was rewritten to recheck if uh, the IMU is back unsaturated. This IMU logic, uh, this was new to you. First thing that you know you could. Simply, instead of removing IMU permanently, you can check if it's back and bring it back into the loop. This is implemented in new rockets also, and the other rockets also. It is always there in the other rocket. No, this type of uh, dwelling, but this was a slightly different case. I think uh, I I can't disclose all the mm-hmm. in, all the intricacies of that choices. Right. So, because you have to understand, this was the first time that we are flying an IMU, which is in MEMS based. Ah, uh-huh, right, right. Yes. The other rockets we don't have MEMS based system. They Those are, are all, mechanical. They are all inertial system inertial. with mechanical gyros. Okay. okay, so the MEMS has a high drift uh, and uh, rate, so that's why we have a GPS or uh, the Navic enabled uh, you know, updates are mandatory for it. Otherwise, it will have large errors. But then this delay between your Navic signal and your rocket's real time location that doesn't. Uh... No, that's there is no delay. There is an update rate. Which is hmm. there, which is in maybe seconds, that is good enough. Otherwise, okay. the what it is doing is only the drift of the sensor. It is compensating. Otherwise, sensor is good. Uh-huh. You don't need uh, any uh-huh. of the satellite GPS or anything to do uh-huh. that if the drift was not there. So you will correct it based on that input, and you that is at low frequency. You don't need it at very fast refresh rate. Oh. You cannot fly based on GPS uh-huh. at all. Uh-huh. You cannot do that. That is what I first thought. Uh, you cannot fly with the GPS. Uh-huh. You need an internal system uh-huh. which is updated based on occasionally periodicity. Okay, understood, understood. And this, uh, did you have that vibration again? Of no, no, no. That whole system is changed from D two to D three. You are referring to D two to D three is one and the same. So no, on D two, did you have that vibration issue on D one? No, no, no. Okay. There was no issue. What? When such things happen that don't replicate on ground, how do you approach like such a problem? Because it's a problem with a rocket. You no, know, the space behavior and cannot be exactly replicated in ground because right. you are not having that feature mm-hmm. in ground, like free flying or mm-hmm. it's not there. The mm-hmm. configuration is not there. So these are estimated to be a, you define device a test configuration which is more or less close up, but there can be mismatches because of simulation errors. Right. The way in which data is look sent seen by the sensor in the real configuration, there are issues of that nature. But this was a very simple issue, which mm. was more of a logic issue rather than any vibration issue. Mm. Mm. Okay. If there was a logic of right nature, it, uh, this vibration also would have been handled, as you said. Mm. That uh, sensor once again look at it, <laughs> you know, integrated for longer time. Simple things huh. could have, huh. but uh, that was not f- perceived. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Because right. it was a new new rocket and a new system. That's why it is happening. Right. Okay, I think that answers. I think uh, 